If you're just starting out with software development, you've probably already heard that you need to learn and use Git. I completely agree with this advice, and I would even go so far as to say that it's a requirement for a job in software these days. Now, there are several services that use Git, like GitHub, GitLab, and others, but I prefer GitHub, and I recommend that you create a free account there as a first step. So if you're just a beginner or if you need a refresher on the basics of Git and GitHub, this video is for you. I'll also add up front that there are other tools for source control, like Subversion, Perforce, and others, but outside of game dev, most companies just use some form of Git. Now you might be wondering what I mean when I say source control. Well, source control is the process of saving your work in versions so that you can return to a previous state if needed. Your new work can be incrementally reviewed by others and then merged into the mainline code. So if this still sounds confusing, just think of it like saving your game progress at checkpoints that you can return to later and we'll evolve from there. Let's take a quick look at GitHub and I'll show you what my public page looks like. Okay, so here's my GitHub page. This is the public view. I'm not signed in, obviously. It looks pretty similar whenever you're signed in. You just have a little bit more options that you can do. A little bit of information about me. You can add some things about yourself. You can kind of make this your own resume of sorts. So scrolling down, these are some repositories I have pinned. I probably should update this. I'll make sure and do this pretty soon whenever I have some new code from these videos that I'm publishing on this channel. These are some older things, some Objective-C, some C-sharp. Uh, this is a Unity game. There's some other things on here that are just open source that you feel free and take a look, check them out if you like. This is the contribution graph. This shows how much code that you've committed. A lot of this is for private repos for my job and stuff. That's why I have so many commits. But as you can see, you can go back through the years. You can look to see which years you were busier than others. My GitHub goes back to 2008 when I first started. So obviously I've been with GitHub for quite a while and it uh, has been a great tool for me. So then you have the repositories tab. This should still just be all my public repositories. I have quite a few more that are private. So there's quite a bit of stuff on here. There's some different things maybe that I have forked from someone else's repo. But forking is just when you make your own copy that you can make changes to. So your basic account here is free. I do have a paid account because I like to have lots of private repos and some other features that they provide with a paid account. I think maybe it's $7 a month or something like that. It's not very expensive, but you don't have to do that to get started. Just create a free one and start looking around at other people's code. So while you can obviously edit some files and save them on the GitHub website, I prefer the GitHub desktop for most things. And if you're a new user, I highly recommend downloading this. It's available for Mac and for Windows both, and it makes a lot of the commands and a lot of the things that you want to do with GitHub quite a bit easier. You don't have to use the command line interface with this. And if you need to do some more complex actions like cherry picking a commit or squashing a commit, this application really just makes it much easier for me. So if you're a beginner, I highly recommend just downloading this to get started. Well, this has been a pretty basic overview of Git and why it's very important to your career as a software developer. I'll be making more videos about Git and GitHub on this channel, so make sure you subscribe if you want to learn more.